You are listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. The potato peelings in the sink did not turn into vodka as I had hoped. I only start to need a drink. After the liquor stores have closed I heard you changed your name again But don't you change your hair It was the only thing I liked about you In the end La, la, la. All right, we're live. Who that? Hot wires. If, any, <laughs> if anyone in the audience needs to do anything or take a loud dump, it's time to uh, do it down the hall. <laughs> All right. Any appropriate with all the shit stories? <laughs> you can edit it in. A lot of good shit stories this weekend. I, I, we're here with uh, Glenn Wool, Steve Pogey, Matt Becker, Greg Chaley, and a cast of characters in the background. Full house. And uh, yeah, we're uh, still in Vegas, <laughs> hanging out. Double down. I don't Split know where threes. to start. <laughs> fucking Glenn Wool has had at least half a dozen stories where I'm going, I got to fucking write that down and tell it on the podcast. And we've just been too animal drunk to even get to a pen (laughs) (laughs) well i'll uh go just yeah dive into that one australian one or new zealand or it was australia i was on hey i'm going i'm doing an australia tour so great segue into remind me to plug my dates after this (laughs) (laughs) i was uh on tour and we were in the middle of australia where no one ever really goes and the food is horrendous and i just wasn't eating like what like what horrendous oh it's like chicken schnitzel and just fucking grow well it's the food in the middle of a desert where only miners are you know not like kids uk like food is like just they do it wrong and there's no appropriate condiment is always the thing but this is just weird bad yeah it's just like bar food and expensive too because it's like for miners you know so yeah. people there have money and i just just couldn't eat it and they were getting really worried and they were like you, you got to eat some i was like trust me when we find a place i like to eat i'll i'll eat a lot of it and we ended up they took us to uluru airs rock the uh, big rock it's in like the national middle. park or something yeah. yeah and they had this barbecue uh place there it was like kangaroo fresh kangaroo steaks and corn and potatoes and i fucking went nuts i ate like two big plates of it and uh then we drank a bunch of beer and me and the tour manager had this idea that in the morning we were gonna drive to uluru from the uh from the hotel and run around the rock uh, just in the morning because it changes colors too in the where it's perceived to change colors so uh and i had to do a radio interview uh afterwards so wake up I didn't how much my... did tom rhodes influence your decision where you go <laughs> i jo- i normally just sit in a bar and eat kangaroo steaks and get shit faced but tom rhodes goes out and does stuff <laughs> he sees all the sights <laughs> yeah no this was a different time for me too i was a lot healthier back then um so uh, it was, it was fall asleep in the room, and I didn't have my phone. Didn't work in Australia, and I so I, I didn't have a clock, and I didn't. By the I, way, it doesn't work here either. I just tried to fucking call you for this podcast, and it goes, "The person you are calling has a voicemail that hasn't been set up." Oh, yeah, thanks, fucking comics. You all suck. It works. I just didn't want to talk to you. <laughs> Did you notice it was my voice who said it? <laughs> <laughs> so, a sleepy sounding voice. Yeah. <laughs> voice man, is not sorry, better. Doug. Glenn's phone doesn't work here. 
<laughs> Try again. <laughs> yeah, try him in an hour. He'll probably his phone will work then. <laughs> so, uh, so you're out in this fucking. I'm out in this hotel. I don't know what time it is, but I wake up and I just figure like it is way later than than running around the rock time. So I have the cup of coffee and a muffin that I'd had from the day before. And, just waited for the phone to ring to, so that I could do this stupid radio interview. Phone rings, I pick it up, and it's the manager. He's like, come on, we got to go run around the rock. I'm like, oh, fuck, oh, shit. So I just put all my running gear on and run down to the lobby. Uh, and we get to the rock, and I'm like, I have How not. far is that? It's like a 20-minute drive, and I just figured there'd be a bathroom there but it's like an <laughs> it's a national monument i guess and you can't dig a fucking pit i don't know <laughs> <laughs> pit shitting. yeah so we're starting to run around this thing and i've got like a fucking slow bowling ball it's moving through my system of all this meat and a bran muffin and a cup of coffee it was that's actually how you load a musket <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure would have brought back a lot of bad memories for the Aborigines. <laughs> <around> the <rock. laughs> um, so we're starting to go, and uh, it's starting to get lighter, and the rock's changing. But I really need to take a horrendous dump now. And people are starting to come around the other side of the rock. So like I, I'm, I'm in a, a position like I have to shit outside. But I don't like. There's no place to shit, and it's, it's the a great desert. wide open. <laughs> it's the great wide open. But I figured it out. There's these signs because it's a quite a it's a spiritual place. It's the Aborigines uh, Sistine Chapel in many ways, and there's these special parts of the rock where they say you can't take a picture of that. That is very serious to them. If we catch you taking a picture, that's a five thousand dollar fine. So I took a big shit in front of the thing you weren't allowed to take a picture of because I figured it'd be my word against theirs. <laughs> How badly you want to rat somebody out. It's the fact that there's no, like, there's no toilet paper, so now... Whoever finds that was like, like it looks like an animal has done it. It's like a, I don't know, a cougar broke out of the jail or broke out of the zoo and ate a bunch of corn for some reason. <laughs> Kangaroo and corn. Yeah. And a Zagnut bar. <laughs> <laughs> So you took a dump on uh, uh, ancient, uh, sacred uh, Indian burial ground. How's your luck in Vegas, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't max bet the royal flush at the bar. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Save some oh, money right. there. Fucking Glenn Wool hit a royal flush yesterday with two quarters in. <laughs> And then he's bragging to me, look, I just won $120. I go for 75 cents more, you would have won 1219 bucks on a progressive, you fucking idiot. Well, if that's my ancient Indian curse. Yeah. <laughs> it's that more is, of a Jewish that's curse. That's one of the tamer ones. <laughs> Even that. Ever, you ever seen Poltergeist, for fuck's sake? <laughs> this guy's been kind of lucky for the last 10 years. <laughs> Even the Al Sharpton-looking bartender waved his head in disgust at you for only having two quarters. Well, in. I don't know if you guys think you're so fucking cool for knowing about video poker. <laughs> yes, think... we do. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. We remember that from the early days. <laughs> Never play less than the max. Australian tour starts. I won't be anywhere taking a shit by a rock, but I'll be in Brisbane you, and you, Sydney you and don't Melbourne. You know that and... for sure. <laughs> I don't know that. I've never <laughs> seen some. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you'll be lucky you if they seen... got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Perth and uh, did we are we going to New Zealand? Is that yes? For, yes that's on the books. Is that yes. all right? Well, it will be by the time this ever gets released. Well, it's not on the site. It doesn't 
It well, I'm just saying. By the time there's going to be more dates, there'll be more dates. Yeah, just check yeah. the bacon in New Zealand. They're in Auckland. They've got one of those things where oh. there's like a big tower in the middle of the city, and you can jump off it on like a. It's not bungee jump. It's on like a line, and then it slows you down right where you get to the ground. And I did it, but the one thing, like, I hope this is a poop story again. Well, <laughs> honestly, they make you do it in these jumpsuits that they've got these these sort of like fucking flashy jumpsuits and i'm like you want me to jump off a building in what is basically the same pair of pants that everyone else has jumped off the <laughs> building in not everyone's gonna deal with that properly <laughs> you put on your evil can evil suit yeah <laughs> put the fucking brown stain in the back yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the brown goes to the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're putting it on wrong, sir. Do you want a video? Yeah, we have a video. Yeah, I want the video of the last guy. Yeah, yeah, it's huge in Germany. These videos, you can, you can sell that on in Berlin. eBay. Don't worry, the glass top table will break your fall. <laughs> Why is that Japanese businessman smiling so much? <laughs> I, I was in uh, Aberdeen, Scotland, and I ate some uh, some Marks and Spencer grocery store day old sashimi yeah. salmon. You always save money with day old sashimi. Yeah. <laughs> well, he and, went uh, to my, my my, but he hit the wrong button on the vending machine. <laughs> and as soon as I got on stage, I just felt the the coffee pot gurgling in my lower. <laughs> intestine and i just tried to pace it off and i was pacing like a fucking cougar as chris rocking it back and forth across the stage trying to walk off this dump and i know it's it's gonna go away eventually you never have to and 20 25 minutes in i had to go uh, all right ladies and gentlemen surprise intermission i'll be right back go help yourself to a cocktail at the bar and i ran up the stairs the shitters up the stairs i'm pushing some fucking security guards out of my way and just made it to the turlet and destroyed it <laughs> but it worked out fine because that's a it, common practice in the uk is to have an intermission and we always just say no we're, we're not doing that fuck you well yeah. yeah that time well you got lucky punk and, <laughs> and that particular toilet is uh, viewed as sacred by the yeah. locals yeah you can't take pictures of it <laughs> but there's no photographs yeah, so, no yeah. photograph. any of them were conceived when we're conceived in there <laughs> steve pogey is here uh where do you live anymore san francisco now i met That's you in where. st louis st louis uh you were uh i don't know if you're on house arrest i think you were no you were on the land i was on the land i had a, a warrant for the uh for my arrest for felony burglary for twenty five thousand dollars uh and our cop friend was there and yeah in st louis <laughs> and you you have it you're like oh i know somebody i'll just make a phone call you know we'll, yeah we'll get you were white out. so he didn't shoot you dead uh, yeah. on spec and then you call me back you're like holy shit this is a lot more serious than i thought it was gonna be it's not just a parking ticket yeah but, you, so you have a well what was at the time at the time i was just I was going out drinking and I thought I'd be cool by making up like my own drink at this bar that I'd always go to this comedy club. So I made up the King Jaeger, which is Jaeger, Red Bull and Crown Royal. And you need about three of them just to black out and just start beginning being an asshole. But I have all the fuel of the Red Bull keeping you moving. Yeah, yeah. And so I completely black out. And when I wake up, I'm in a jail cell with an orange paper jumpsuit and what I think are just flea bites on my chest. But after I unzip the suit and look down, it's like burn marks, scorched flesh, and it has a stink to it. <laughs> and I'm like, and waking up, it's like, cause it's not like, I didn't immediately have like the, you know, oh, well there was a guy yelling and then you, you know, they were taking your picture. It was just like, how the fuck did this take place? And so I'm waiting and like, I'm waiting. And then I like, I'm white. So I get frustrated and I'm like banging on the door. Like somebody assist me. Where's customer service. <laughs> and then some guy comes up to me and I'm like, why am I here? And he goes, oh, you don't know. She had a little girl and he just walked away <laughs> and left me at that. And at this time I had been a, Acceleratedly horny because when you're drinking King Yeagers, nobody's fucking you because you're just a train wreck, vomiting mess at some point. <laughs> Andy Andrews but... just popped into this, my view. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I, I'm sitting there and, and then he just says this and he walks away and there's no one in my cell in the fucking cell phone. Like, you know, put your ear to the wall box that they call a phone isn't working either. So I wait a little bit longer. I'm trying to sleep it off. And then I pound on the door uh, again. And then the detective comes in and we go into like the interrogation room and I'm like shackled and everything. And uh, I, I got wasted and my buddy lived nearby and like our group got separated because we were also like doing this comedy club like show, but we all just kind of said fuck it two hours beforehead and everyone just got blasted. So people are drifting in and out, wandering off in St. Louis. And uh, I went to what I thought was his house and I'm like banging on the door yelling. And then this woman comes out and she's like, get out of here. We don't know who lives. And I'm like, it's Sean fucking around with me. And I walk around to the back <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you, Sean. You're a piece of shit. I'm going to beat the fuck out of you when I get in there. And I'm like trying to open the back door. It's not working. And I just fucking kicked it in because I'm coming in there. And then uh, apparently there was a bunch of boxes and I, it's dark. I'm just crashing and thrashing around and the cops show up and they're like, you know, come out here, stupid. And I'm like, all right. And then I tried to run away in the garage. Like I shut the door <laughs> like I was going to make a break for it and fucking get out of there. Hide behind a box. So then they came in with a taser and that's when they dropped me. And that's how I got the wounds. But the wounds were so bad is I was so drunk. They stood me up. I stepped forward. I stepped on the wires they hadn't taken out and just literally ripped them out of my chest. Like what cop filled you in on all this? Some like, this sounds like you had to meet the cop at a bar and go, oh yeah, I had to be no, there. No, because he was he was <laughs> like so funny. They sit down and they're like, so what happened? And I'm like, not not really sure. I don't have this like, slightest what's, and they're like clue. Well you're outside of this woman's house saying fuck you, I'm coming in, eat a dick Sean. Um, <laughs> Reading it off the paper. And, and yeah, like so when you Mike find Close. out this, that her daughter's name was Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was girl's name. But you're also going. That does sound a lot like me. But yeah, but go yeah, on. Like, so far, that's, that's me. Some, that's me. Yeah. Talk some shit like that. And uh, she told you to go away, and you said, "Fuck you, I'm coming in." And you know, she got scared, called the cops, and all this. And uh, they're like, so at that point, they're like, "How do you explain this?" So I just have to make up some wild. I'm like, well, my dad called me and he said he didn't love me. So I just walked to the gas station and drank a bottle of vodka and you now we're here. That's what I guess happened. Like that was my concoction. <laughs> and they lit, he goes, I was blackout drunk. Was not good enough? No, no, not for this. Actually, Actually not teaser. remembering is a way better excuse. You would think. Like, I don't know. I was just fucking well, it was like a, I must I have thought it was Sean's house. But you're like shell shocked, like, hung over. So you're not, yeah. you know, fully optimum. And I, I'm like, told him I, com I was a comic, and he watched my videos on YouTube. And like, <laughs> wait a minute, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, he goes like, to check YouTube. Like, well, he's like, just take a second. And he's like, like that was his version of like, we checked you out, and you're okay. Like, we went on YouTube, and we saw some clips, and uh, yeah, so you, just an asshole. You, uh, uh, bail? No bail. No bail. They're, they're like, we're gonna just give you three misdemeanors, and then we're gonna send you on your way, and everything. So they let me go out of the police station without a shirt. I have. No just, shirt. Just your herpy chest. Just fucking, <laughs> yeah. you know, little pig, let me in, fucking burn marks. So after <laughs> after you turned him into your friend, did you reluctantly count some reward money? <laughs> <laughs> well, at first, it was no big deal. It was just three misdemeanors, $500 a pop, you know, maybe pay a fine, do some community service, whatever. Well, then two months later, that's when this felony burglary charge comes. They because changed their mind. They, they saw your they newest like, YouTube no, clip and went, not an so funny after all. That's okay. Don't like the new stuff. And so, <laughs> uh, dude, it, it cost like eight grand. We had to keep going to trials. The worst part was like I had to go to the lawyer's office and look at like photos of the crime scene. And it's like a busted door, a broken doorknob, a, a crying child. Yeah. But then there's a picture of me without the shirt on with the blood coming out and i have like the biggest tmz smile like yeah oh yeah we were rocking it out man these are my boys yes. <laughs> fuck it just but like i'm in the lawyer's room like by myself going through it just like what a fucking asshole that'd be what? A, so that'd, happy that'd be a great direction for jägermeister to take their product in advertising exactly <laughs> But you know, it did. Uh, it did uh, put you on the straight and narrow. No, I, could you want Derek to make you a cocktail? You seem to be I a little do, low. I, I really, that would be amazing. 
I, I, I don't think no. we have all the ingredients for a King Jaeger, though. No, no we don't. We I don't, don't think they have no. it at the bar. Actually, really. we're on the 24th floor. I don't think you can get them on the 24th floor. <laughs> <laughs> Once Pujols left St. Louis, that dream died with the King Jaegers. <laughs> but then the re- the reputation like lasted of because I would I turned it into a you know stage thing and I did it on stage. So then anytime anything bad alcohol related happened. I was immediately the bad guy. They're like, nope, we know your act. You're a fuckhead. You did this. And then yeah, well, you get jumped somewhere, right? I got, well, I was at uh, Indiana. And after the show, there was these bachelorettes. You were from at fucking, Indiana? Somewhere in Indiana. <laughs> not too descript. <laughs> you so knew it, you weren't at Sean's house, though, right? No, <laughs> not, not Sean's house this time. I don't think Sean's house exists. I <laughs> but I, I got to, I had to go on house arrest for that, and I talked the comedy club into telling the judge that I was an intern at the comedy club so I could still do open mic on Tuesday. Nice. <laughs> with, with my ankle bracelets on. <laughs> so I had a How great day, but I had to let go. 60 days. Wow. It was fucked, man. But... I mean, it's not as bad as jail time. You're just stuck in your own shitty life, fully absorbed. Yeah, my I life think is a young house comic arrest. Yes. Much. May not even notice how th- house <laughs> arrest. <laughs> yeah. He just had to go to open mic every week. Though. Yeah, yeah, right. It's the worst part. Like, you got to put me up. I, I wrote it on the sheet. I got to fucking go. You've been oh. wearing that an- thing on your ankle for two months. Yeah, I've been wearing these clothes for two months, too. What's your problem? <laughs> I- I, when I met, when I was on the run, when I called you, I would I used to not go stay at my house on the weekends because when the cops arrest you, you know if they come on the Friday, you're fucked till Monday when they would let you out. So I would go to my buddy's house, like down in like city of St. Louis. You're on the lamb just and, weekends only, dude. I'm on the lamb, but I'm like I got my backpack and like my camera equipment from recording my little sets and that shitty geo tracker. And the thing breaks down on Friday night with me and all my newly purchased gear. And I called my buddy Jimmy Rice, who was at the club I was coming from, and I go, Jimmy, you got to come get me, dude. I, I've got a warrant out for my arrest, dude. The cops are coming. They're looking for me. I can't afford this bail. I'm totally fucked. And he goes, well, I, I can't leave, dude. I got to sell my shirts. Like, I, I just got off stage. I'm like, well, how many do you have? He's like, five. I was like, I'll buy them all, dude. Just come and get me. <laughs> just come and get me. And he goes, but they won't be out in the community. And I'm like, fuck you, Jimmy, come get me. Ironically, you wouldn't be either. He he goes, I'll send out the MC and then I'll do the closing announcements. I was like, you're a fuckhead, Jimmy. Jimmy Rice fucked me over. I think you need to reassess your friends. Well, Sean doesn't seem like a good friend to begin with. I don't know. I think I would have made up an excuse, too, if I'd heard, the cops are coming, man. I don't know what the hell is going on. I got a bunch of equipment I need to hide here. I'm a wanted felon. Can you pick me up? Yeah. Harbor a Hey, could you aid in a bet? Are you in any position right now? Yeah, I like yeah. the fact that you just had to hide out on weekends. It was almost like you're in the National Guard of felons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then the 60-day deal times the one month. <laughs> if you've got three weekends in one month, you yeah. can be a felon. <laughs> so you're at Indiana. I'm at Indiana. Uh, bachelorette party, as all fucking horrible comic stories start off with. And fucking what, The bachelorette totally loves me. I'm fucking slick, trimmed haircut at the time. And she's, oh, well, my boyfriend's going to come, but I really Because like he had a court you. date. You're all trimmed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Yeah. You go to court, you look it like Forrest Gump. It would have been six months if you hadn't had the haircut. <laughs> fucking this but ill-fitting she's, suit. Go ahead. Once again, you get <laughs> too drunk. Guy, and, the, and the MC's T-shirt on. Under. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, will Button you wear up. this in your mug shot? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about branding, right? They publish those on, yeah. the, on the internet. Hey, every post office at Indiana. That's right. <laughs> have you seen me? And they got to put them up. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's mandatory. Those have to be everywhere. And they're up for at least 60 days, dude. You're, this is a fucking solid. I picked you up. I picked you up. So you're you're drinking King Hoosiers. <laughs> King Hoosiers. And, uh... <laughs> and uh, I get fucked up. I'm trying to fuck the Bachelorette. And uh, she's like, tell, oh, my first, boyfriend's going to First come. of all, 
Isn't that like horrible? Like that's the worst thing you can do. That's oh, bad instincts. Not only bad address instincts. them from stage, which is the worst thing, but then the. Uh, Try to fuck them afterwards. The after to show, justify. local bar, hangout, fucking, you know, running around. Great show. I'll buy you a shot. Oh, thank you. I'm so terrific. This is amazing. Hey, what's going on, lady? And then eventually, <laughs> I, I can boyfriend see that shows a, a, up. Approach working. Go ahead. And yeah, and it was like my first like like week long one nighter road gig where like everything was strung together instead of just popping in and up. Yeah. And uh, so I felt like you know I just fucking played Madison Square Garden. The Bachelorette likes me. What do I got to lose? Well, apparently a lot when the boyfriend shows up, and uh, yeah. you're, you're oh, not. Oh yeah, she did have a dude, I guess. Yeah, yeah not bachelorette. A... They usually have a dude. Not too undercover either. Like, hey, we're still gonna do that thing up in my room, just yelling at people. <laughs> and uh, he didn't see fit to this, so he whacked me over the head with a bottle, like out back. And like, I remember like getting hit with in the head with a bottle, turning around, going, "You pussy," and just falling <laughs> down to the ground. And then I'm waking up in the ambulance arms and I had to get stitches and everything else. And uh, I, needless to say, I never worked for that agency again, which brings us to Vegas for the World Series of Comedy where I didn't go on because guess who happened to be a judge at the World Series of Comedy? The daughter of the woman <laughs> whose house you broke into. The, the, <laughs> there's the, a couple people that could have been. Made me <laughs> Let's do the short list. Who? <laughs> who wait, was it The Bachelor? Booker, the booker that fired me, well, not fire me, but would refuse to hire me because I got into a fight. He like refused to believe that I actually I got hit got in the back locked. of the head with a bottle. Yeah. Like, exactly. That's not really a fight. It's yeah. more of a one but drink minimum. The hotel was like, it's a fight. <laughs> <laughs> one drink. <laughs> <laughs> and he he was judging my round, and I did not pass. Well, yeah, that, this is big thing. I don't even know if you know about it. There was this like fucking middle act comedy competition going on this week in Vegas or I last heard week. About it, yeah. It was like a hundred comics or something. Yeah, like a hundred and one. They did a bunch of uh, little competitions around to get people to qualify into this. All in Vegas? No, no. Like, they, yeah, like the main event was in Vegas. The main event. It's, they, it's oh, so all it's over the country. To, yeah, yeah. And it, did you have to pay to enter it? Uh, well, it was it was fifty five bucks, but that automatically got you into like the Booker meet and greet. And like a drastic discount on your hotel. So like, even if you didn't make the competition to go to the book or meet and greet after they've seen you, it was fucking worthwhile. Uh, but no, it was a large entry fee. Yeah, we were trying to do the math on how many people must have entered to boil it down to finally, after a year, it's down to 100. All right, this is a good time for a cocktail break. We will be right back. This cocktail break is uh, sponsored by Poji. Uh, who do you want to be sponsored by? Uh... Who's a fucking booker you're just sucking up to at that fucking... Oh, Eric Yoder, sponsored by Eric, Eric Yoder. Yoder. We work with Eric Yoder. Yes, Eric Yoder. Please book Steve Poggi. Book, <laughs> book Poggi and book the best. <laughs> book Poggi. You'll always wake up with a story. That's not <laughs> Poggi's catchphrase. That train, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's still on the lamb. I don't know how it gets to these gigs. Hey guys, I gotta go. My ride's here. Yeah, yeah. Go. Best question. <laughs> yeah, Where's my rock. knapsack? I yeah. love. That. I love that you're on the 24th floor and you can still hear the train through these thin ass walls. <laughs> Brought to you by the Plaza. It's just like 1940s Vegas. We'll be right back. All right, Australia, New Zealand, we're coming. November 11th, we start in Brisbane. Actually, don't we have another? Was that a yeah. secret date? In the yeah, we're other go Byron Bay. Byron Bay, we're going to start out. And then Brisbane, we got Canberra. We have Sydney, Adelaide, Perth, Melbourne. Sorry, Darwin, I tried my best. And soon we will be adding Auckland, New Zealand to end it all. Not to end it all. I have other plans for that, but uh, okay, now back to the podcast, already in progress. All right, yeah, we're back. Now, it was Indiana, that's the rest of the story. Well, you had to get staples in your head or something? Yeah, yeah, I had to get staples, had a mild concussion, and uh, didn't work for the guy again, who ended up being a deciding factor on whether or not I moved on. So, Oh, this competition, I know you called me. It's kind of like the Keith Lowell Jensen story, Brian, where you called me up when I'm just bitter morning, still hangover drunk, and 
He's like, I have this new special I'm putting out, and it's called uh, An Atheist Christmas, and I got a distributor, but they want to ch- want me to change the name because they think atheist is going to turn people off, but that's the whole point of the thing. And I'm like, fuck them, don't do it. And then I go up to San Jose to work, and he's, he's on the bill, and I was talking to him. I go, yeah, actually, uh, before turning the gun on himself, I, I, uh, I had that title for the two CDs before, but they wouldn't let me do it, so I changed it. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't get distributorship because he wouldn't change the name. I go, actually, yeah, I've actually changed the name of a few CDs <laughs> <laughs> under just a small but, amount of duress. But, but, but way to stand Sorry, your ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Poggi, I did the same thing to him. He calls me up. He goes, I got this great new bit as a Ray Rice bit or something. Don't burn the material, but right. Ray Rice related. And he's like, I don't know if I should do it because they... they, they they don't want me to do it or the crowd's going to hate it, but it's a great bit. I'm like, fuck them, do it. You call me the first night. I just got eliminated. I did the bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, no, you didn't do the bit. Uh, I was going to, but then the audience was like, ho- like hotel tourists more like, th- like in that particular night that I was performing, there was a lot of blue hairs out there. So uh, I-, I held back on that a little bit, but. It worked for me because in the meet and greet, they're all like, we really liked you. We, we had you to go on. You didn't just make sure you email us and let us know when you're coming out. So, yeah, that's what they get paid to say at a dumb yeah. meet and greet. What are they going to tell you the truth? Well, no, just not, got flown not, out not all of them, just oh. only the ones that were judging my round. So, so then I was, I'm sorry, I was wrong. You should have done the fucking Ray, Ray Rice, Rice bit. bit. Yeah, I would have a crown better. on right now. You'd have a paper <laughs> tiara. <laughs> You'd be known as King Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> That's my tater salad. <laughs> yeah, King Jaeger is your tater salad. Right? <laughs> yeah, you got anything? Yeah. I got, I got more. I got Poji notes. I have a list of things right here that were given to us as gifts in Vegas, just hanging around watching football with the fans all day. I got, uh, I got several packets of uh, Mexican Viagra. <laughs> And I go, I don't need those. And he's like, well, I brought them for you. I'm like, all right, uh, someone is going to use them. Yeah, I wondered where Andrews had gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> yeah, probably from what? When you were just over there in my room and saw them laying there? You <laughs> don't worry, gutters. it's not his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, some of the dude brought me a suit, a, a silk Thailand handmade tiger print silk suit. I rocked that last night to the Saints game. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what else we got? Uh, the fucking drunken idiot t shirt. A guy gave me it off his back when I said, That's a really cool t shirt. I don't know what he changed into. I don't really remember. But at some point, he just gave me the t shirt. Yeah, you gave it to Bingo. She handed it to me and she goes, Hey, put this at the Christmas tree with all the other gifts people are bringing. And I grabbed it. It's like, this dirty T-shirt? It was still wet from some guy wearing it. <laughs> but it's a cool T-shirt. Well, yeah. right. Hey, there's worse ways to lose your shirt in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> no taser oh, involved. Oh, all right. That's yeah, the end of the but, note. Yeah. <laughs> there was those. T- uh, there was that couple that had a penis pump and a double-ended dildo. Oh, and that's right. Up, yeah. yeah, they ended up. Well, they hang gave, on. Look, the, this was the night before, after the show. Your cousin, Glenn Wool's cousin, brings up this dildo, double-headed, long, double-donger with a penis pump. It's sticking out of her purse. She's walking yeah. around <laughs> with two heads of the snake sticking out of each end and of the purse. And a couple of losers from the casino are just following her. <laughs> Is this where we're going? Well, I guess she I've said- seen Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> we're in the room and she's... <laughs> ass to ass. <laughs> ass to ass. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you on Friday. Uh, yeah, and she said uh, some guys wanted you to sign this for him, and I, I've I've been around long enough to know that it, when you autograph a latex dildo or rubber fist with a sharpie, it will just bleed in over a course of a week or so. You're just, it won't stick. It's gonna look, yeah, yeah. look like a 1940s tattoo where you go. What did that used to say? On a dick. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> a dick. Yeah. So you gotta so, look at it really close. Sounds like one of Andrew's stories. When stand up, so <laughs> out of respect, I didn't sign it. But then we wake up and this fucking room is just littered wall to wall with empties. It's yeah, it's like a backyard fucking picnic aftermath of Fourth of July, but it's all in one room. And somehow there's a fucking dildo. You just when you wake there up, a, there was a, a dildo horror stuck in a penis pump. Like somebody had made that little Lego. Hey, it fits in there. You're welcome. Yeah, you're, it, it. It's easier to easier to handle. Do you, yeah. is your, do you find your dildos not long and thick enough? Try a penis pump on it. What? I'll just buy a new one. Buy the somebody, small one. Pump it up. You save a fortune. Somebody for a brief second thought they were a scientist. You got to heat it up first. <laughs> So cut to football Sunday. I told everyone well, we're going to hang out all day football Sunday, which means that whenever we wake up till we fall down. So at 1230 or something, I wake up. It's almost the end of the early games and I run downstairs and my eyes are still fucking swollen shut. And you showed up yeah. shortly afterwards and you run into the guy sidles up to me now sober. Who you don't know. Uh, don't know. Like, I met him once, but he's like, um, uh, your cousin's got my uh, double-ended dildo and penis pump. I uh, <laughs> just uh, wondering if I could get it back. <laughs> what? Boy, oh boy, if you dreamt it, you'd go, what the fuck did I eat last night? That, that was, now it's in my actual memories. <laughs> Did you have him describe it? Yeah. <laughs> which, which which cousin? I got a few here. <laughs> have you checked lost and found first? <laughs> what Could you go to the, the front desk first and ask them? And if it's not there, we'll I'll check I'll get Stan them to Oak's make place. an announcement over the <laughs> casino. <laughs> Ladies, what's your name? <laughs> Do you remember the brand? <laughs> 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 Write down the serial number. Yeah, there's, it's quite a form you got to fill out, but I think <laughs> we're gonna get it back to you. Yeah. But yeah, we did. Uh, we did get it back to them, and I signed the penis pump because that's not gonna smudge. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a pro. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> when you're trying know, to sell this on eBay and realizing I'm not that but... popular after all, you want that signature to when, not be smart. When Stano puts his name on a dick, <laughs> he wants it there forever. Quality. <laughs> like the stolen Bibles. They have to be yeah, authentically right. stolen hotel Bibles, and you know I'm not going to put my signature on a dick that's just going to bleed in. Well, I'd like... love to be there the day he catches his roommate. Hey, yeah, that's my Stano penis pump, you dickhead! Oh. <laughs> oh, Sign That's a collector item. That Ricky. is decorative. <laughs> hey, Put it back. Impressive. It only says tan hope. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Charles. <laughs> uh, uh, we got the, uh, the, the uh, donkey cigarette thingy. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Susan Bazell. Our uh, anesthesiologist at large, uh, she brought us a, uh, brought bingo, a Johnny Depp cigarette case and lighter co combination. It, uh, uh, sick, the lighter uh, is mo like modular. It's part of right the, into yeah, it. It's part of the cigarette case. Very 1950s. Very, yeah, very cute. The, the, oh, these things we're, we're using right here. Look at that. Someone brought us ashtrays. It's, one says Doug's butts and Amy's butts. Why? Who fucking did that? Who calls you Amy, Bingo? I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, it's Maybe because a Facebook friend. Someone don't... swears this uh, Cajun power spicy garlic pepper sauce is the best hot sauce. Like people, he just keeps giving it to me. I'm like, I'm in a fucking casino. I don't want to be walking around with hot sauce. <laughs> So Actually, that's, that's all when we, we started the Christmas tree. <laughs> that's all we do on tour. On tour, I bring my around with condiments. What are you talking about? Because I get so fucking angry. If you only have Tabasco, I go fucking berserk. And this is the best gift of all of them. Hang on, what's that? Oh, the population control kit it has a bullet and a hanger or something and a, and a cool T-shirt. It's funny if you saw it. Uh, Vegas 702, you fucking jinx. Thank you for bringing us old copies of the uh, 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 Vegas Weekly from the uh, original Desert Party that uh, we were on the cover of. And this is the best, though. Some woman <laughs> says, I brought you and Bingo gifts. I'm a dog groomer, so I 
And she's dead serious. She's a middle-aged woman, very nice and homey. And she goes, I brought you matted dog fur. It's not like, it's just <laughs> hunks. It's very mangy looking. <laughs> yeah, look at that. You, yeah, look you, at that, it is you combed that out of a dog and made a big dreadlock pie out of it <laughs> and brought it all the way down here. <laughs> and flew it down here. She wasn't even here to watch football. She just drove all the way down knowing we were going to be watching football to bring us matted dog hair <laughs> for no reason. She had, and that's the best gift of all, like <laughs> someone that fucking weird. It's going that's, to Bisbee. Maybe they're yeah. oven mitts. <laughs> <laughs> you can use them as Smells anything. Smells like a holocaust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. just Robin Williams it up. Look, I'm, <laughs> I'm Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Is that a toupee? That's, that's where I, I thought oh, she was better going. Better their beaver. <laughs> if anyone's missing a dog, I just want to clear myself now of any illegal wrong. I love dogs. You heard the story. They can't fingerprint hair, Poji. You're safe. <laughs> you fucking killed a deer. That's one thing. Did Have you I ever not? hit a deer? Yeah. Right. Uh, I, we've Eve. never clink, no. knock on wood. Christmas. Every road comic, not everyone, but yeah. the fucking... Chris, Christmas Eve hit a deer, and a family uh, pulled up, uh, like, in a fucking really cheap, beat-up car. And the dad was like, what'd you do? <laughs> like, ah, hit a deer. And the kids in the back went... It's not Rudolph, is it? <laughs> it's a true story? Yeah. It's fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> Top that one, Poji. Yeah. Well, I got mugged again. <laughs> <laughs> That's how this story starts. My fucking kids this time. But, yeah. I, I mean, Gilroy, California, known oh, for wow. garlic. And it's after the show, I'm wasted. The person I'm supposed to stay with is fucking got kicked out of the club for throwing Let's chairs. Let's just stop saying we were wasted. Just assume every story that goes around yeah. this table starts with. Well, well, I was coming out of it now because I've learned from past experience. So I'd like sobered myself up. I'd sat down. So it was really late at night now. And now I'm like, all right, I'm fucking, I'm back in my body. Let's fucking, you know, trudge forward. And as I'm walking along, there's this like one Latino looking kid, like 16 year old. And I remember making the comment going, Pfft. Who the fuck lets their kid run around this late at night? What a fucking dumbass. You know, that kid's going to get hurt. And then <laughs> fucking not more than four more paces closer to him, he turns around and goes, give me your phone. And then, like, little Mexicans come running out of everywhere. There's, like, four of them. One like, of us. Buy a One car. Fucking <laughs> out of an alley. Like, I'm, I'm just surrounded. I'm hearing mariachi music. In, <laughs> just, just, just in the way you remember it. I've got, and I, I've got my stupid fucking iPhone. You give me the phone. It's four years old the back's cracked i need a new one anyway so it was just like i just fucking threw it at his chest and then just ran for my life got lost in this area i wasn't having i had my clicker for the van like you know clicking around waiting for the and i was just like I, I, at the moment i was like god you're such a fucking cunt why the fuck would you do this to me i'm a nice guy i make people laugh you're such a dirty piece of oh, i'm so sorry i didn't mean to say any of that i found the van Got in, <laughs> driving along, no phone to GPS home, fucking two lane, you know, road, dark hills, 45 miles an hour, deer like jumps out, like commits suicide out in front of me, like, <laughs> like he fucking meant to do this kind of thing. Death by comic. And dude, <laughs> I've, I hit this bitch so hard. Like I hit the steering wheel, like I got out, like I looked, his brains were like leaking out of his head and he was kicking. And I was so mad. I was just like, your brains are out. Fuck you. I can't help you. You're done. And I just get back in the van. I leave. Did and a I... bunch of other deers come out and try to steal <laughs> your phone? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but to go back. He, he didn't even have his voicemail set up on that phone. Dude. Weird thing. <laughs> he, tried to he, call him for a I ride. I hit this deer so hard, it knocked my radiator plug. Like, it cut it in half. Like, fucking hit him, like, dead on, full center. And so now I'm in the middle of nowhere, and I have a ticking, like, jack bauer 24 until the van's not gonna run anymore <laughs> and so i see lights in the neighborhood and here i am you know half cock knocking on a stranger's door again <laughs> like i knock on the door ring the doorbell i stand back and they're like what is it i'm like i hit a deer everything's fucked could you call the police like <laughs> I, so finally you're yeah. asking for the right police. yes yeah. now i want them to show up and they show up but like the person that called said there was like a disturbance thing. 
So they come out like it's a hand village, on the gun. village, middle of nowhere. Hand on the, put your hands where I can see them. Get down on your knees, face away from me. But you know, put your hands behind your head. Lay on the ground. Lay on the ground. And then I hear one of them go, "Oh, this dude fucked a deer." And then they were like, "Oh, okay, you can get up, sir. It's all right. We know what's going on." <laughs> I didn't know you didn't know you guys knew about that. <laughs> <laughs> you got what about the one I hit? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> that deer was sworn Becker and I had that uh, When I had this piece of shit Olds Cutlass in LA Where uh, I still I had been living on the road So I still had New Mexico plates Where you don't need to get You know Smog or anything like that oh, okay. And it would have never passed So we actually went to New Mexico To get the tags re-upped Road trip Road trip back It's way easier than Trying to ever get that thing To be up to code But <laughs> in New Mexico You have no front plate so we got pulled over on Sunset in La Cienega or Fairfax with that whole fucking get out, put your hands yeah. like Lay on the ground, get yeah. your hands on your head, yeah. kneel down on the sidewalk. Yeah, that's like you have, you have, they, Walk like you have a backwards. bowler or something. No. Like, we can't touch you. Yeah, and then fucking patting us down and hands behind yeah. your back. Just, well, you didn't have a front license plate. Well, you, they don't have them in New Mexico. <laughs> really? That's your fucking training? Flatfoot. Yeah, we were a little. <laughs> I, we were a little I, arrogant I just, afterwards. <laughs> well, after well, afterwards, we were like, by, we're white. what do you as, think happened? <laughs> yeah, that was what we said in the car. You know what we should have said? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we had some great one. I would have done uh, yeah. this, but I didn't know. I was in uh, Saigon, and we had to go to Phnom Penh in Cambodia. And the only way you could do, like, you could take a bus, but it took fucking forever. So the guy, the booker said, okay, you got to take a cab to the border, walk across the border, and then uh, get another cab. There'll be cabs there. You, it'll be easy. Wait, what border? Uh, f- Vietnam and Cambodia. Cambodia? So we're like, and they're, he's like, trust me, uh, it'll probably work. <laughs> <laughs> the one-nighter in Vietnam? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> So we're driving and we're on. Yeah, this Yoder th- books it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never go. No, no, it's the. Other I love guy. Yoder. Yeah, Anything like negative him. about Yoder is not proclaimed to <laughs> me. Uh, hang on, where are you going, Andy? You're next. You're on the next podcast. Right, I'm just taking Jesus down the road. Okay, bye. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, we're driving <laughs> on this like highway, uh, and it's me and uh, Carol, my girlfriend at the time, and a uh, guy, another comic from Malaysia. And uh, oh, the fucking Malaysian hacks! Yeah. I can't work with them anymore. <laughs> and we're, all, we're on the highway, and the, the fuck you, yeah, Rangoon this, Rangoon that, whatever. <laughs> rubber chicken, rubber chicken. Yeah. <laughs> the driver. So we're on, we're on like a like a highway, like a real highway. And this kid, this little Vietnamese kid, is on the highway, standing in the lane. Waving the car down, the, the driver's like, ah! and serious, like the the car, like he's he's like that, and the car is just ah! like one inch away, and he's standing there like that. And at that point, four other kids get out, and they're trying to um, give us uh, flyers for a brothel right on the border. <laughs> Oh. It was, and then I was sitting there, and they they ran up, and they saw Carol, and they their just... own pictures are on the flyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing, but it was just like this un- uncomfortable thing for them because I don't think they've ever seen a, a white woman in the car, so they're trying to hand a flyer, and they just go over her to hand it to me, like, oh, you you won't like that, but uh, sir, you you'll probably. Uh, I thought you were just trying to one up as I hit a deer story with. I hit a Vietnamese kid. I just kept going though. I didn't knock on anyone's door. What Fuck do you mean? Did you go out and get the body? You don't have to. You gotta cook them. They're still fresh. You can get them. My buddy from here in Vegas, Mikey Greitz, uh, when we were young men and we moved out of Vegas, we were doing fraud telemarketing. We were like, "Fuck this. We can move anywhere." And we went back to Massachusetts. Mikey's from here, and. He was a young and a little bit daft at the time. Uh, so we told him, we we're just driving around Worcester, showing him he's never really been out of Vegas, basically. And uh, so we're driving around, and there's a homeless guy like, half in the street. And he's like, oh, you could have fucking, he almost hit that guy. And I said, well, in, in Worcester, Mass., 
the homeless problem is so bad that now if you hit a homeless person, that you just, if they're not in a crosswalk, it's legal. It's not your fault. I was just fucking with them. But we forget to tell them we're kidding. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing bad happened, but a few weeks later, he's driving and he says, now listen, if I hit a homeless guy, I know it's legal, but do I have to stop and report it or... <laughs> Can I just keep going? I'm like, fuck, we were kidding, Mikey. He could have been driving around like fucking Death Race 2000 for weeks just hitting homeless people going, no, no, they told me it was okay. That's a you, fucked up tweet. You don't know that he didn't. He might have learned, he might have known to lie at that point. Like, oh, yeah. He, he doesn't return my calls anymore, so I just assume that, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe he thinks I'm a witness. I, I called you in Chicago after I got beat up by tsa <laughs> oh jesus how many of these stories do you have poji what Four. time are we at we might have to make poji a fucking three-parter of oh and another time i got fucked up. Right. Mm -hmm. what happened with tsa uh, again yeah. not your fault <laughs> no not my well not i was in chicago wearing a st louis cardinals hat uh during the t the government shutdown to where tsa wasn't getting paid they just showed up and the people that wanted to be cunts were just fucking coming in for free and uh, I looked at the line to go smoke, and it was too long. And I was like, man, fuck it. I went in the bathroom, and I lit up a cigarette, and I took like three drags, and I threw it in the toilet, and I, I walked out. You do that all the time. Dude, red hats. Like some business guy walked in right behind me, and as I'm walking out of here, I'm go, oh, really? And so I'm uh, fucking trying to hide at my yeah. gate with my stupid red hat. Yeah, you're fucking shitting out a whole bunch of wiener schnitzel and Cinnabon, <laughs> and my cigarette is the offensive smell, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Sure enough. Yeah. Fucking yeah. thank you, Nathan Hot Dog shit. Yeah. You're ruining my cigarette. The fragrance is organic. <laughs> yeah, what did he want to smell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be the best case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> I was coming in looking for fresh shit smell. Yeah. How dare you insult me with this cigarette? <laughs> so sure enough, man, fucking TSA. Uh, one guy, he didn't even look like an actual TSA. He was just like a guy, and he was like, you know, he smoked a cigarette in the bathroom, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not me. And uh, again, you know, half cocked. Like, Fuck you, not me. Blah, blah, blah. So then the TSA guys come, and then they're like interviewing me, and then like since it's the shutdown, one one second, what time is this roughly? This is like five or six in the afternoonish. Okay, because so, I had to catch a connector from. All right, I'm just out of I'm just wondering what time you're drunk at TSA. Oh no! Early, I I was, I woke up doing mini vodka shots that I had reserved for the plane. Oh yeah, but yeah, I got my own bag. Uh, yeah, go but ahead. I don't handle it as well as you. I'm not a professional. I would have signed the dildo, not the pump. See, that's the difference. <laughs> yes, that's see? the difference. You got to yeah. sign the that's, sign the pump. Rookie. That's why you didn't. You lost that competition. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Always <laughs> sign the pump. <laughs> so fucking they step. They bring in like this like retarded guy. Like like sports goggles, like strapped to the head, like he's gonna run down somebody who makes it through with a bottle of water. And <laughs> since it's the government shutdown, he's like the fucking leader. Like they promoted him to captain or whatever, and so now he's handling everything. And Thank I admit, you. I'm I, I'm trying to say Lord of the Flies reference. I couldn't find. Go ahead, Piggy. <laughs> I, 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 I was trying to say, is this really happening? But I get to, is this re, and he's in my face, say it, say it right now, I dare you to say it. And I'm like, I, 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 I'm not saying retard, like, I'm, that's not, I can't explain myself, I'm just, and I'm like, you know what, I surrender, I go with you, fucking, you got me, I'm not flying, I guess. And then uh, they fucking take me, book me down on some disorderly conduct charge, I have to go down to downtown Chicago catch a bus out of the police station. And remember, listeners, this is because he wore a St. Louis Cardinals cap in Chicago. Exactly. It was all just, you know, it was a whole sports thing. It wasn't Steve Pogey no. being fucked up out of his head, not being able to just say, it wasn't my cigarette. No, I love a team, and they wanted to shut me down. <laughs> so Bubbles from the trailer park boys exactly. decides exactly. he's going to throw his weight around. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking get him out of here! And and in the end, you couldn't trick a retarded guy out of it. I couldn't, dude. They they brought in special forces. What am I supposed to do?
<laughs> they have advanced training. Yeah. yeah well, I, I, does this, this appear to my thumb being coming <laughs> off and on? Huh? <laughs> what about that? <laughs> hey, switch. Let him go. <laughs> Who knows what else he can do? <laughs> Good cop, dumb cop. Dude, they played me. <laughs> he got my nose. He got my nose. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't have crayons. Book him. <laughs> <laughs> what time are we at? Okay. Uh, All right, we're gonna wrap this one up. It's <laughs> it's been beautiful. Yes. And uh, the next podcast will, in our time, will be moments from now. But uh, for you, uh, sponsorship. Do you have a sponsor, or you want to plug some dates? You have something going on, Poji? You're painting uh, houses now? What are you doing? (laughs) StevePoji.com. I've got an independent pothead stoner video series that we're releasing uh, in a couple months. Fucking kids with ambition. P-O-G-G-I. You want to plug something? The Birdhouse in Anchorage, Alaska? The Birdhouse. You can't miss it. You have to go. And the uh, Near the Wild podcast also. Becker's Near the Wild. We're going to have to do a swap cast. Just you and me. Swap cast. I've got uh, a new new album coming out uh, in October called No Lands Man. And because there's such a sizable chunk on it about Iron Maiden, the cover has been done by Derek Riggs, the man who did Eddie. For the, Iron the character. The, uh, okay, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh-huh. That's awesome. Yeah, me, <laughs> me and Beggar go, huh? Iron, Iron, Iron Man. Man. Oh, oh, really? oh, Doug, you know <laughs> we... way more Judas Priest than you let on. We were yeah. watching a cover band. Every fucking word. Oh, Arena out at... Uh, oh, out yeah. I, was, I remember. I still don't know what happened with the rest of that night because I, I left you. Chad Shank left. I remember I was kind of dancing to the house band. Or maybe that was before Iron Maiden out down on the Fremonts. All I know is I had money when I went out, and I woke up with chips instead of money. So <laughs> the chip fairy. <laughs> well, I I I must have hit a table, but I can't imagine how I could have possibly walked away from it with money. <laughs> how could I have won Something's or even right. broken even? It's at some point in your blackout, you learned every word to rock it after midnight. <laughs> See, that's the thing, that. Poji. If I fucking kicked in a stranger's door thinking it was my friend's house, I'd still be living with them, and they'd be making me breakfast. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was just, I call it serendipity. Yeah. <laughs> He's such a professional. I asked God, and he showed up. That's what happens. You just ask God, and he shows up. Don't take him away. Our little daughter will miss him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the uh, Doug Stanhope podcast. I believe that we're uh, done till uh, we go have more cocktails and do something else. All right, play the matoid. Party time. Party time.
Party time. Hey. <laughs>